Hey guys, and welcome back to the 1v1 podcast. I am your host, Vladis, and I am joined by the one and the only Reeve Genesis. What's going on, man? Hey, nice to see you. Dude. Thanks for the invite. <laughs> no, like I said, I, I really <laughs> appreciate the conversation, man. Uh, yeah, it, I mean, did, should I roll off the table at the start? I, I know, right? <laughs> I was going to say, like, uh, I should we probably warm my singing <laughs> voice up a little bit. <laughs> so for, for many of you who do not know, uh i actually found this guy because i was watching asmongold one day and <laughs> asmongold reacted to one of his videos <laughs> and yeah. it was about wasn't it about diablo immortal it was um the riot mmo I, I oh the right mmo that's right yeah yes you put it on reddit right, right right some people saw it and shared it with them and then yeah all of a sudden i had one video explode so right yeah the rest have not exploded but that one did <laughs> <laughs> yeah for sure so. i know with diablo mortal has been such a debacle right now but yes the whole yeah. right mmo has been so interesting uh because i follow G greg street i've been a long time wow player 15 years mm -hmm. and yeah. you know he was the lead game designer back in mr pandaria and cataclysm i believe um and yeah like he was basically the dude i mean he he invented the water Absolutely. cooler uh blue yep. posts uh, in World of Warcraft, and I mean, he was so as as many times as I disagreed with him, I at least appreciated his frame of mind and his thought process yeah. behind his changes. Uh, that's something yep. Ian Hazakostis and the newest team just don't understand, and I think they're trying to get better in that. But honestly, I, I've lost sure. faith in World of Warcraft um, a year ago. So personally, I don't care. Um, yeah, but I, I was just going to ask you, Reeve. So. Um, what MMOs like have you played and like where where do you come from when it comes to the MMO genre? Um I think I was, well w World of Warcraft was my first MMO and I okay. uh, prior to that I had played basically their other games um and that's what moved me into World of Warcraft. I was big into Warcraft 3 and and StarCraft oh. and some of those other mm -hmm. games. And uh, I actually got like an alpha key to World of Warcraft and it was of course, back then, extremely buggy, but I, I just kind of fell in love, and it was wow. I'm old enough to have played some of the other games like EverQuest, but I just never got into the genre before that. Like many people, WoW was the first. And, and after that, I've played all kinds of different ones. Um, I think I got burnt out in WoW uh, probably, well, actually, probably. See, I, I was in the military and got deployed during Wrath, and I oh, came damn. back and I played yeah, so I never played uh, Wrath, really, because uh, by the time I got back, I felt like I was just behind, and I didn't want to mess with it, but I did play Kata. Okay. And uh, and then I got kind of burnt out. I don't think I played much. I haven't played much since then. I've, I I did play Classic recently. Guild Wars 2 was a big one that I jumped in, and I've put a lot of hours in. Um, Rift, I put some hours in. I've put a lot of hours into quite a few different ones, but Okay. definitely wow is still probably my number one played i would say okay so i i mean i kind of i mean i played wow for 15 years and i only dabbled in other mmos like i i play final fantasy 14 for its story um mm -hmm. been playing that since since Shadowbringers. um but that was a really really good experience because coming from wow they always yeah. said well it's an mmo you can't do a story well <laughs> well yeah yeah that's right. that's long shot ever since final, Fa final fantasy started doing its thing because they do stories mm -hmm. so well because that's yeah. exactly what they focus on and yeah. um uh, you know but for me being in world of warcraft I, I was a long time raider i raided from wrath basically uh toc wrath all the way to now or last year i should say uh 9.1 was when i quit not really because of the whole july debacle of the sexual allegations and this is and that and that right. there was a lot of internal <laughs> guild drama and there was yeah. also just the fatigue and just the the blizzard not giving a fuck about right. us as players until that whole Absolutely. debacle happened then they were like a dog in between their uh like a tail between their legs and then they started sure. changing everything but then it was so disingenuous like they were only making changes because they knew they were losing millions of players it wasn't yep. out of anything because they knew they messed up it was because damn we need to recoup our losses we got to start making changes and listen to the players it just yeah it, it was such a bullshit thing and and honestly like i knew ashes of creation back in july of 2020 when asmin gold talked mm -hmm. to steven on his stream and i was following ashes pretty much ever since i just didn't purchase into it i i was still so 
coked out on wow that i was like drugged yeah. into that game right until i kind of sobered up and i was like screw yeah. this game i'm not going to play this game anymore and basically yeah. ever since then like it's just been ashes like i've just been diving into the community meeting people in the in the ashes community and it's been awesome like i, I don't know if you talk to a lot of people in the ashes community but not a tremendous amount but okay. more and more starting to more okay are, do you belong to any kind of like ashes community like a guild or anything like that yeah i'm in a guild uh it's called warbound it's okay. not super well known i don't think but it's some people that i played it in and some other mmos guild wars 2 most notably okay and that guild that i was in in guild wars 2 was called unlimited it kind of fell apart and <laughs> and everybody spread to other places and a lot of them ended up in this guild and that somehow i found it and i i joined it uh, a year or two ago but they weren't in alpha one i was one of the only ones that was in alpha one but right. uh, most of them are in alpha two so uh, i'm excited to actually play a game with them i played a uh, wow classic launch with them when that launched last year whenever that came out but other than that we haven't been playing a lot of mmos together there's just nothing really to play um i feel you man i was actually such a no go ahead such a drought sorry i didn't need to cut you off there no, but we had such a drought of mmos for so long like yeah we had korean mmos and, and other stuff but like western devs just weren't making mmos i think 20 so they, I don't know if you ever seen the video. There's a video from uh, Never Knows Best, and it's like the history of MMOs, and it's like three oh, hours yeah. long. Yeah, it's but he crazy talks long. about yeah, yeah. He talks about like from 2014 through 2021, there was no Western like AAA Western MMOs launched, right. and so that it's just without new stuff coming in. There's just everything is so stale, and there's just nothing to play for a lot of long time MMO players. But Ashes is definitely. I'm not all in on the Ashes train, but I'm pretty, pretty so. I mean, I paid 500 bucks, so I'm pretty far in. But uh, I, I'm, I'm leaving my, uh, my options open, of course. I mean, I, Riot MMO has some things that interest me a little bit, and and Pantheon's another one that I've, I'm keeping my eyes on. Um, but I'm definitely, you know, I kickstarted, um, what was it? A uh, Camelot Unchained, and that after that debacle, I just kind of avoided kickstarters until right until this one till ashes but um and i didn't get in on the kickstarter but i did get on that a2 pack when they they launched or the alpha one pack when they launched right. that last year right right before a1 so right and so like I i'm just curious because a lot of people i've been talking to a lot of people that have been on the fence uh, actually i have a person i'm going to talk to this week probably on the next couple of 1v1s uh from now um he was a total like non-supporter of ashes of creation and he transitioned sure. uh to being a content creator for ashes of creation because yeah. of just steven the development mm -hmm. what they've been showing recently with like the seasonal tech and just the character creator just they keep showing what they're doing and sure. I, I think for a lot of people that were non-believers and think oh this is such a scam like you guys are scammed yeah. oh my god uh it, it's, it's hard to make that argument at this point yeah it's right becoming harder yeah it is becoming so. harder and so like I, i'm just curious like why are why are you still like you say you're on the fence like w what is it about the game uh or maybe even the development that has you a little trepidatious um well i hate to bring up the same thing everybody else does but i mean i, I do want to see combat be a little better um for sure i know that they yeah and i know that they um they, they've nailed it this year with their their live streams but the problem is these are things that they've nailed in the past for me um the arts and graphics they've always done well with this even in apoc and a1 that was those were the strengths of those releases for ashes um right. but combat in apoc and a1 not bad per se and in the direction they're going with combat i think is fine there and there's a few i have a few gripes with combat i just dropped a, like a 50 minute video on like my ideal combat system in an MMO yesterday. So I could talk for days about combat, but it's that, some of the things they're doing, like they're going to have projectile collision, which is something I like in combat. Uh, but then some of the things that just I find weird and I hope they pivot away from, but it wouldn't like kill it. Like it wouldn't kill the game if they had things, but the, the, the turning on and off the action camera and going back and forth between tab and action i don't know why you need that why not just have some skills that are action that use like a skill shot system like 
you see in MOBAs or you saw in like Wildstar. Right. Why not just use that? Or use, um, you know, if you want a reticule, I don't, I'm not a big fan of like reticles in, in MMOs, like it, unless it's an MMO FPS, why have a reticle? Maybe have five, 10 percent of your skills use the reticle, but you have to turn it on. You know, when you push the button down, the reticle comes on when you release, you fire the skill. Like, why not? Why not do it like that? Why not have like a dynamic reticle that comes on as needed? You know, uh, things like that. Just little things. If they could tweak it, I think the combat will be just fine. And combat is so important because it's what you interface with all the time. So, uh, right. I I think that's so it's, it, it. It's things like that. Once we get, you know, and I think they'll I think they'll nail combat. But you know, I, I'm one. I'm an older MMO player that's been burned. You know, you know how it goes. Oh, for sure, dude. <laughs> so I'm I, definitely not all in just yet until I see a little more. For sure, for sure, and I think a lot of people are like that right now, especially because combat isn't a very important mechanic of any MMO. I mean, you could have, like, even Steven said, you got the best graphics, you can have this, but if you don't have content, sure. or if you don't have, yeah. a like, a a solid combat system that makes it visceral and the noises, and for me, I love Lost Ark's combat because um, I'm not really much of an action player myself, but what makes mm -hmm. Lost Ark so good is when you push a button and it does like the spinning scissors or the sound effects come on or the crunch sure. or when you're a berserker and you like swing your sword, it all just feels really yeah. good. Now, I know a lot of the whole root motion split body debate has been like we want to try to go away from root motion. I don't mind certain root motion attacks. I just don't want everything to be root motion personally. Like I wouldn't mind if Absolutely. there was really like a really strong ability that was rooted uh, in, in a way, but it doesn't have to be everything, but I am in total agreement with you. Uh, when it comes to action, and this is the thing that I've been noticing, a lot of people that want action are melee players. Every single time I talk about to someone that is like dead set on action, I ask them, well, what class do you want to play? They play a rogue. They play a, or they want to play a fighter. You know, they want to play a yeah. tank, but it's never really the casters or the healers, because honestly, yeah. if you play New World and you want to go and heal a New World, action sucks. <laughs> like, I mean, yeah. it, it really does. And I think, yeah. like you said, if there was abilities that do have action based uh, parts to them, components, um, but then there's other ones that don't. And if you're a healer, like, I don't mind reticles so much when it comes to healing. Like, if you're going to put, like, a healing rain or if you want to put, like, a totem that pulsates out or whatever that is. But I, I would like more dynamic reticles, like what you were saying. I think that would actually work really well, especially when it comes to big 250 versus 250 or 500 versus 500 castle sieges. Right. It's just going to make it more dynamic. It's just going to make it flow better. Um, But I also think... As Because for me, I'm more of a ranged person. I'm more of a caster or a ranger. Like if I'm going to play, yeah. I'm going to either do a necromancer or I'm going to do a ranger or I'll do probably even a mage, depending on how good they are. But mm -hmm. when it comes to action-based abilities and having to point and click a fireball, I think of 250 versus 250 and I think of lag. I think of mm -hmm. just everything slowing down because there's so much happening and you have to aim something and you're missing constantly because of that slight lag. And yeah. I think it's going to be a nightmare for people. I really do. Yep. And I, and, and, and for me, I'm not trying to advocate for a totally tab oriented thing, but I think again, make action or make action or make melee very action oriented, make ranged, uh, have some maybe action elements but the majority of things are going to be tab based. Like it's going to be like a, an auto attack where you're not going to have to aim an arrow. You're not going to aim a fireball, but you can have like a, a greater fireball ability that could be aimed that does a, a huge thing of damage, but sure. like your basic attacks aren't going to necessarily be aimed. And I think that's ultimately like, and again, it's really hard to see because we don't have alpha two. And I think yeah. that's why people are getting very antsy because they, they haven't really seen anything and because everything on paper sounds so complicated you think mm -hmm. how is an indie developer gonna get this right when we've been constantly like either betrayed or let down by triple a studios you know what i'm saying right. so i think yeah. that's really where a lot of people are coming from and, and i don't know if uh you said that you bought 500 hundred dollar package from intrepid so how long have you been backing intrepid just so we can put that out there oh uh, right before 
right before A1 came out. Like, well, well oh. as soon as they launched that new A1 pack, they, they put out a new A1 pack. I was like, all right. Oh, so this was like in 2020 <laughs> then, right? Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah, because yeah, I, I yeah. didn't purchase mine until 2021, honestly. I think September. Yeah. Uh, No. September, October? No, it was September 2021 when I bought my first pack, but I only got mine for 375 because I don't think there was a $500 package at that point. Um, but yeah, I, so when it comes to like other things, like what makes you kind of excited for Ashes? Like what, what kind of gets your blood boiling a little bit when it comes to like the excitement levels? The main thing is uh, the return to needing to have organized groups oh, dude and and, yes. and needing yeah and not and not being able to experience all the content without an organized group so world of warcraft final fantasy as well it's mm -hmm. you can go through like basically all the raids on the easy mode settings more or less right get a pickup group you don't have to talk to them at all mm -hmm. and, <laughs> and it rarely is their communication unless something goes wrong and then normally they just kick you or whatever somebody gets kicked you know you know how it goes right right right. so there's just not it's not social and, right um one of the things I was making that stupid riot MMO document uh, that Greg Street did say is wanting to return social to MMOs with riot MMOs. So that's one thing that keeps riot MMO on my radar, but there's some things about that that don't keep it on my radar as much. But I we we don't know anything about that game yet either, though. So oh yeah, it's... yes, return, wanting to return social to MMOs like Ashes definitely hits that. Um, the Pantheon MMO is hitting that, although they've got a lot of work to do. They're they have a lot of work to do uh, right yes, they MO, do. they've talked about that some but then they make some comments that completely contradict that so i don't know what direction they're going yet um i i worry though because they want to be a mass appeal game and that's my biggest worry about right is what do you mean by mass appeal because historically a lot of mmos what they meant by mass appeal like swotor and rift and all these clones that came out they all what they meant by mass appeal was wow clone yeah <laughs> so that was, and um so we'll see we'll see i i get wow clone vibes from the riot mmo so we'll see on that it's so weird right because they say you know I, there was a quote i believe uh he said this mmo is not going to be for everybody so how can you have a yeah. mass appeal and then also say that this game is not for everybody. It, it's it, very contradicting. Yeah. It is, you know what I mean? And 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 believe yeah. me, like I've been thinking a lot about Ashes when it comes to mass appeal. Because it's it's one of those things where because Riot is Riot, they can afford to say, we're going to be very picky choosy with our community, and we're gonna alienate 80% of the MMO community because we're Riot. We're a billion dollar community. If we want a hundred thousand, a uh, hundred thousand people playing our game every month, and that's what we're comfortable with, because we're not gonna, you know, we're not gonna bend to the casuals. Or we're not gonna bend to other, you know, societal pressures or whatever. We know what we want, and we're gonna do it. And if yeah. we have a hundred thousand people, so be it. Ash the Creation is an indie developer. At the end they of the need, day, they, they don't players. have the infinite money yeah. that uh, Riot would have. You know what I mean? So yeah. to, Riot can say this game's not going to be for everybody. Can Intrepid. And that was my whole thing. You know what I mean? Is if 100,000, like if you had 2.5 million people playing Ashes of Creation on the release, a month later, we have 100,000 people playing. That to me is a huge red flag. That'd be bad. Yeah, huge. That'd be terrible. <laughs> because again, Ashes yeah. isn't going to be for everybody. I mean, Steven yeah. said that it's going to be very PVX oriented, which means PVP. You can't turn off PVP. There is not going to be any PVE servers. So that alienates a lot of people in just saying those things. Like as soon as you mention there's no PVE servers, like, oh, bro, I'm, I'm not playing that game. I'm not going to be ganked over True. and over. That's stupid. You know what I mean? And again, people don't know about the corruption system. They don't know about yeah. all of the, the different interconnected systems that are going to be in play to help prevent all of that. Um, yep. but again, I, I just, what I fear is what is sustainable for Intrepid? Like, what is their magical number of what they can hit and say, we are fine with this number? Because if they said, you know, 1.5 or 2.5 million people playing and then 500,000 people at the end of the month, and like, if Intrepid says, Hey, we're fine with that number, that number can sustain us just fine. Then I would say, don't change anything. Like just keep it going 
and appease those five uh, five hundred thousand players as best as you can, because sure. because there's no reason to say oh we want to make this bigger, because if they know that they can sustain that and and you know we can make our money and and still advance the game and not change our principles overall, then because again if people want ashes to be this MMO for everybody, you know what I mean, and I I feel like hey if Steven really wants to make a very centralized featured MMO that isn't going to appeal to the masses, then that should be fine. However, financially, you can't bankrupt your company and, and screw yeah. over your, your employees over that vision. If it's not going to fit numerically, you know what I'm trying to say? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, they're, I think what are they aiming for? Like 200 employees. I think they have like, Oh yeah. 60, 170 now. Right. They're in California. Yeah. <laughs> Dude. Their, their wages out there are crazy high and high-end programmers and game developers make make bank uh, mm -hmm. especially in california uh so I mean, if you start doing the math on just what their monthly costs are oh, dude. now most mmos after release they do cut staff pretty aggressively so we'll see i guess i'm curious if they're gonna do if ashes is gonna do that or not um but because I mean, if they don't cut staff and they're at 200 and they stay there I, yeah you need i'd say you need probably two to three hundred k minimum i would say it's probably higher than that i'd have to pull a calculator out and start doing some rough estimates and then you know obviously rent out there's high and everything too so um yeah they need they do need a, a certain amount of players one thing i do wonder though is because it's the first like what western release other than new world right that has promise and has some hype behind it in since 2014 um true so i think you're gonna get i think i think they're gonna have two to three million players and i think they're actually oh, gonna true. grow after launch that that's my view and i think riot mmo if they go massive field could have like four to five million and, and if you do that then you're talking about both of those games are in the top five most played mmos in the west that that's kind of just ballpark guesses on my part if ashes gets to two to three million it's wildly successful and people compare numbers to wow and it's heyday you can't oh, that's dude. not fair you know? no yeah <laughs> so, because it, I, how, yeah yeah 500k is credit incredibly successful historically it was i mean right lineage back in way back in the day had three million players before wow uh, was launched so it's so that and when you consider mmo player base as a whole has grown despite the problems we've had um Three million back then is insane, but 500k would be is still very successful. There's not very many MMOs that have 500k active players these days. So right, because there's people are so spread out in MMO in the MMO universe. So <laughs> it's that's the problem. Well, the other so. thing that I've 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 gathered from people is that for a lot of people, and especially the older people, I would say over the age of 35 and over, this is like a last bastion. This MMO. Yeah is like the last chance for people. I don't know why. Like it's like they they're staking it all on this on this sure. game. Uh but I mean I understand because investing your time in an MMO is so precious. Time yeah. already is precious. You know what I mean? Like I just say to myself that I played WoW for 15 years and I like I can't process that. Like that's almost yeah. half of my life that I have dedicated to this game. And I really would love to dedicate 15 20 years to Ashes of Creation. And honestly music to my ears like I only hope and pray that 2 million people sign up for ashes on day one. And then at day 30, there's three or 4 million people playing because sure. I feel like if they, if you, because this game is going to have Asmongold, this game is going to have rich, this game is going to have uh summit G one. You're going to have Tim, the tap man. You're going to have probably a doctor disrespect. You're going to have all these, all of these streamers streaming ashes of creation. And if all mm -hmm. of them, are having a great time playing because again this game is not going to have pay to win there's not going to be any yeah. pay to win crap at all so we can yeah. get that already out there because you see the recent debacle of diablo mortal with all of the right. you know tens of thousands of dollars that people are spending towards that game well guess what you ain't going to do that nashes like no, there's not going to be anything there. like yeah. that so I'm, I'm really curious as to how once we see alpha 2 and once we see the the polish and we start seeing because it's going to be chills like i'm telling you i'm so so excited to see what streamers yeah. are going to be saying when alpha 2 is out 
because I feel like the hype is only going to get even more real. And after, did you see anything from Throne and Liberty? The the lineage. Yeah. Six, okay. Yeah, I saw that. Yep. Okay. Yeah, I, I mean, I'm I'm a little bit excited about it, but I'm, uh, I don't know <laughs> what to say. <laughs> it, if it it everything that co- does the, everything that comes from the east, unfortunately, it just ends up being pay to win. But the right. concept of the game looks amazing. Like if they mm-hmm. if they if they don't put pay to win in that thing. I think it'll do just fine, but they, they're going to put pay to win in it. I mean, they're just yep. probably going to put pay to win in it. And like Arc Age 2, like I would play it, but it's probably going to be pay to win. So, um, and there's so many like Bellatoras, there's some, there's so many Korean MMOs that are constantly getting thrown at us, but they always are pay to win. Every single one of them, Blade and Soul. Um, mm-hmm. I don't think Blade and Soul was too bad, but um, Black Desert definitely was extremely bad. Arc Age became extremely bad at one point. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's just, it's unlikely. That it, but man, that franchise, it's the Lineage franchise. It's, it was built on Lineage originally, but they changed mm-hmm. it to a different universe. But Lineage has a massive fan base. If they don't put pay to win into it, it could be a big contender, but they're going to pay to win it so oh easy and that's why i don't like i look at the game and it looks like they're taking a lot of inspiration from ashes of creation or they're doing a lot of ashes inspired features and my whole thing is is that lineage mostly yeah which that's what ashes is inspired correct lineage so correct and so So. because this game is going to be apparently coming out at the end of the year which i don't think that this game is coming out at the end of the year there hasn't even yeah. been a play test. There hasn't even no. been a beta. So <laughs> yeah. if you think Throw to Liberty is coming out, you know, fall or or winter sure. of 2023 20, uh, or 2022, I, I don't know what to tell you, man. Like, I, I just, yeah. l- I look at this game and I see something that I can probably waste my time in if it's free to play, because I guarantee you, if it is free to play, it's pay to win. Yeah. There's just no it correlation. If yeah. it, And honestly... Even if it wasn't yep. uh, free to play and it was a fifteen dollars month sub with a forty dollars box cost, it's still pay yeah. to win. I mean, it's NCSoft. It's exactly, what they do. Yeah, I mean, they did buy ArenaNet, and ArenaNet has kept. Well, I mean, Guild Wars Two. There's some. There is pay to win to some extent, but it doesn't. Guild Wars Two doesn't have vertical progression, so it's, it's more like pay know, to. Con- it's, it's like yeah. massive pay to convenience. Yeah. Massive convenience. Yeah. Yeah. So they somehow kept pay to win full pay to win out of guild wars 2 but I, I will that last forever guild wars 2 is actually growing in population it's one of the on, only mmos that's growing at some point is ncsoft gonna jump in and say hey we need to monetize this you know i it could happen i don't know how exactly you pay to win uh fully pay to win guild wars 2 though but if there's a way to do it they could probably figure it out because they are masters at it so oh for sure um but I mean, as far as like the last, like the last bastion for MMOs, like I, I wouldn't say I'd go that far because there's just so many Western MMOs like being developed now. I think there's, it's yeah. If all of them fail, then yes, nobody, no big, um, no big funding's gonna come into the MMO space anymore. And that's what happened in 2014. You had all those MMOs fail, or not no do as do well it. as people thought. Yeah, and then nobody wanted to fund them anymore. So if this new round, I think we're entering a new golden age for MMOs. That, I'm about to do a video for, on this, but I think we're nice. coming up on a new golden age for MMOs with Ashes, with Riot, with there's a company called Dreamhaven, mm-hmm. and they Mike it's like Mike company. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think they're making an MMO. <laughs> it's just pure speculation, but I highly doubt. I highly doubt they put all those people together. Like it's not you know, like Frank Pierce and all sorts of different like founders of Blizzard. Mm-hmm. Um, I think that eventually an MMO is coming. I think they're they're like making mobile games, and maybe that's to introduce a new IP or something. But I think that's just a front for the MMO that I think is eventually coming from them. And then you have Pantheon, which is a very untalked about um, MMO, but and it was purely crowdfunded. They had all kinds of funding issues. They finally have some funding, some angel investors. And they're actually hiring, they're growing, dev is, dev is improving for them, the dev speed is improving. Um, there's the dude that made Ulta, um, Ultima Online. Mm-hmm. Uh, I can't remember his name off the top of my head, but he is building a sandbox MMO. He made Ultima Online and Star Wars Galaxies. It's kind of a mm. weird name, I can't remember it off the top of my head, but that's another one developed in the West. He has a lot of funding. I saw the funding, it was like, I think he needed like 20 to 25 to make a, 
MMO and like sandboxes, you only need like 15, you know, 10 to 15, just dropping a bucket money, you know, <laughs> and everybody has that. So, um, but there, yeah, there's, there's a lot of them and there's one called mainframe, a company called mainframe in Europe that's making a, like a cloud based MMO. I've never seen in the last 10 years, this many Western devs working on MMOs. And there's quite a few, I think I forgot about. Um, right. So I think there's a lot of p potential things. I think Ashes and Riot are right up there in terms of the two that have the potential to be the best. But I think I think you're going to see like a new crop of MMOs at the top of the most played five years from now. I think some of these new ones are going to take over. Do Do you think with this new age of MMOs, we can finally get a new age of players? Like, do you think that... Oh, there's a dog there. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry about that. Yeah, she, no, she always likes to come in and be like, hey, what are you doing? Oh, okay, you're doing that. Uh, yeah, the new players. Yeah. Uh, I, I think so. I did a, I have a video on my channel. The average MMO player is, is 36. And so you have a lot of 20 somethings. They've never touched an MMO, never, never touched one at all. But I think you said it in one of your podcasts. There's a lot of them have played like survival games and things like that. Right. And those are kind of hardcore PvP type games. Like, I don't think like people are necessarily scared of hardcore PvP. And the PvP in Ashes is not anywhere near as hardcore as like a Mortal Online or oh, Dark sure. back in the day, or even Ultima Online. Not even near as hardcore as that. Um, you don't drop everything. I don't believe you drop gear, but you will drop um, things you've gathered. Like yeah, your process materials gather. and gatherables. And the, yeah, and the penalty for killing somebody is. is at least on paper, we don't know the weightings and the numbers, but the penalty right. is huge with the corruption system. I don't think you're going to have people just going around just mass murdering everybody. I think um, it's. I could be wrong, but I, we'll see. I think it's going to be very meticulous. I think just yeah. like in real life, you don't go out on a, some massive murdering spree, right? If you're going to kill somebody, no, no. it's very calculated. You sure. know who you want to kill, and it's yeah. usually premeditated. <laughs> so, yeah. I mean, it's just one of yeah. those things. And especially with Ashes. And what I love about them doing servers and having no cross server integration, your server reputation is going to matter, which ultimately yeah. means your guild reputation is going to matter. And just like any gang in the United States, sure. just by having a guild banner above your head, oh, damn, like they're part of Unlimited. Like, I'm not going to go and mess with that person because all of yeah. Unlimited will come to tag me. You know what I mean? Or yeah. Unlimited will say, hey, this guy from Wretched you know, uh, killed and uh, killed me, you know? So now we're going to just go kill any wretched guild member that we see. Like, that's, what's going to happen. Like, and people honestly don't realize it. And, and I, what I also love about it too, is that just like we were talking about earlier with having it be a group game, finally, mm -hmm. we're not going to play a single yeah. player MMO anymore. Um, right. is the fact that like being in a guild and being with people matters in ashes of creation. That excites me to no end because I just got into this or just finally got out of the wow loop of doing everything by myself, only needed a guild to raid. And honestly, you don't yeah. even need a guild to raid anymore. There's, there's group finder or, or, you know, looking for group. There's a whole bunch of ways to even, you don't even need a guild. There's so many people that are just guildless because there's no point. Absolutely. There's no benefit. Yep, that's the way I was in Cataclysm when I came back to wow. Uh, it I was guildless and mm -hmm. i mean they penalize you being in a group like if you want to go grind mobs or something which is never optimal or if you want to do quests True. you'd be penalized for getting in a group because they did have like a modifier on xp but right. it didn't kick in until like the fourth or fifth member and it was only like 1.3 or something so if you had like five members you'd get like you'd split you'd have to split that mob xp across all five but they would multiply the mobs XP by like 1.3, but it wasn't enough to offset it. Plus questing was the most optimal route. So mm -hmm. then you, if not everybody's on the same quest, you wouldn't group, you know, <laughs> so it's just, True. it was silly. Like it, everything was designed to force you to not want to group in many cases, not, not even just not even like a random pickup group. Like there was no dynamic events like Guild Wars 2 has where you just kind of random or Rift had those. And a lot of MOs have had that. And Ashes is going to have that as well, where you just, whoever's there, you party up and you go. And there was, even in wild, even like random pickup groups, unless it was a dungeon, just really didn't happen. Yes, there was right. like some elite quests here and there, but nobody did those. Everybody skipped that. So, That's true. unless it was in game, you might do a few of those. But, um, 
Yeah, it's just everything de-incentivized grouping. And Ashes, I know Ashes is going to have a like a multiplier that starts right away, and it's pretty high. So it might actually be optimal. Like if you are going to grind, and they're not, they're supposedly they're not going to have much grinding. You're going to be able to do quests and dynamic events and sieges. And we will like that see. To level, <laughs> but. I kind of get the feeling the way the nodes are laid out that there may be a little bit of grinding for leveling. And oh, I really sure. hope if, if there is that they have that the optimal way to grind is not without a party. Um, and they True. do that. They can do that with the mod, the, the uh, XP uh, modifier, um, just crank that thing up into where it's way more optimal to group up and then everybody's going to group up. And that's, that's really good for an MMO. I think long-term do you do you think because that's the thing people are uh people usually say oh they're going to abuse the hell out of it there's going to be people that are that are going to be so efficient because of the alpha testing and then once we get into the live game they're going to be max level in two weeks like you know what do i say to that who cares yeah everybody is going to be at max level at one point like if yeah. they're if they if they put in the work to to figure out what they can do to to level as quick as they can good on them you know what yeah. I mean? Like, why take that away always, from them? I've always been one of those guys. I'm always, I'm a min maxer, and right? I'm one of those guys that I a lot of people hate guides and think guides are ruining MMOs and things like that. But I'm the opposite. I use guides all the time, and I make many guides. people do. I I you know I mean if I'm gonna sit down and we only have so much time, I want to I want my time to be efficient. So a lot of people right. have that mentality. It's on the game devs. People blame the guide makers. People uh, blame the people that use the guides right it's on they put some of that on the game devs for making games that are way too easy to solve put more randomness into your world and ashes right. is going to have that with the node system built in is it enough i don't know but not every world is going to be the same you can't True. build guides that work for every server you, you might have to build guides for a specific server but you don't know what the server is going to look like on day one um, unless there's really organized, I, he, yeah, I think some really organized guilds are going to say, all right, we're going to go level this node and we're going to go level that node. And then you may be able to, because alpha two is going to be on forever. Right. They, people might optimize it. it it's probably going to happen to some extent with the really organized high end guilds. They may optimize it. But back in the day, like in world of Warcraft, like the high end guilds would keep all that to themselves. And there wasn't, they wouldn't put that out publicly. So I think you're going to see some of that. I think you see some of the, like the old school, like we're keeping information in house kind of guilds out there. Um, and, and that'll be interesting to see. How, it's going to be interesting to see how that all shapes out. But the other thing you can do, just more RNG in terms of like boss mechanics. Like, why not have, like, if you're going to have a raid boss, why not have a pool of like 20, 30 abilities and randomly it's going to use 10 in this fight? And that's right. really hard to optimize a guide for or make. And they're not going to have add-ons. That's another big thing. Ashes is not going to have add-ons unless I'm mistaken. But we I'm will sure see. Read, we will yeah, see. we will see. I mean, people will still make add-ons, but they're not going to be official add-on support. Like Final right. Fantasy doesn't have official, official add-on add -on support, right? but there is add-ons. Add so, um, but you're not going to probably have like deadly boss mods in Ashes oh, of Creation. I don't want deadly boss so, mods personally. Like that's yeah, that's the to me that's what's made WoW ratings so terrible. At least in my opinion, yeah. uh, there, yeah. there's a lot of things that I am very excited for when it comes to the PVE front for Ashes and the way they talk about the AI and how it learns from the group's behavior really yeah. excites me. Because if you're yeah. a very efficient group, that boss is like, oh shit, I can let loose. I can. I can do 10 abilities instead of just three, you know what I mean? Yep. And it's, but again, I, I feel like <clears throat> with how many abilities, cause I always, if I always figured this, cause people are saying, well, how is that fair? Like if you kill a boss and you're playing badly and you only do three abilities and you're going to get loot from it, how does that make it fair to the people who had 10 abilities? Well, it's going to be different loot because the boss knows, yeah. Hey, I had 10, you know, I'm, I, uh, had 10 different ability sets compared to the three. So even if it's the same gear, you may have more modifiers on that same gear that the Absolutely. other piece of gear doesn't have. You know what yep. I mean? So it's still that's, a way. that's, yeah, that's definitely yep. a way that you can make the yep. same gear, but just different because I think of it kind of like hard mode, you know, back in, you yep. know, other games, you know what I mean? It's like, yes, it's the same gear, but because you did it harder, 
we have more modifiers, more stats, maybe unsocketed gem slots. Maybe some stuff has like special enchantments or tertiary stats like trinket bonuses or something like that. There's so many things they can do to make it very cool and something that is repeatable and still has like more things you can get. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And that also makes it to where instead of having an actual normal heroic or mythic that people are used to from, let's say, World of Warcraft, there is no thing. You just do the yeah. boss, and if That's you're cool. if, if you're failing to it, it learns and says, okay, yeah. you do it again, and then you keep doing it, and it's like, okay, you got normal loot because you yeah. finally killed it, and there ne doesn't need to be an actual difficulty associated with it. It's just going to learn. That's a cool idea. You know yeah, what I mean? I but like that's that what they're idea. doing. Like Ashes is literally like yeah. Steven has said that that they have a that... AI that they're going to have, and depending on how good or bad the group is, the boss will end up doing more mechanics based on how your group is doing. Oh. Well, I learned something. I thought I knew a lot about Ashes, but I didn't know that's exactly how the AI was going to work. That's cool. Yeah, I mean that's great. That's great that the, that's. I think that's awesome. Yeah, I, I mean, there's so many things that Steven and the team want to do, and again, I. I'm all for the thing of like, just let them do it because I don't want a game. And I don't think Steven does either of releasing something that where, oh man, we should have really put this thing in. And honestly, the one thing that I've really appreciated from their development process is they have yet to scope creep. Not even once have they scope creeped. Have they added some feature that wasn't in the original Kickstarter that they said, Oh, sorry guys, we're going to add this thing. We're going to delay the yeah. project by a year. Like, you know, look at star citizen, you know, it's been in the development for over 10 years or 11 years now. Um, and it's still not out and it's still probably not going to be out yeah. for another 10 years, depending on how, you know, yeah. so I, I just appreciate that, you know, this game has, is going to take them a while. This is actually year six sure. of development yeah. for ashes of creation. If you look at any yeah. normal MMO cycle, classic wow took five years to make uh final fantasy 14 if you added 1.0 to 2.0 it was nine years technically because of the debacle yeah. 1.0 was if you look at uh, start yeah. right and if you look at let's say star wars the old republic that took seven years to make yeah, it and, and release yeah. and even that game wasn't fucking finished and that game uh right. you know had a lot of problems and it was a wow clone basically you know what i mean yeah. it's not like they added anything crazy like ashes is doing um so it was the fully voice acting and mm -hmm. all the st crazy storylines i think put on that one but right. yeah it, everything else was so generic and that's why that one kind of flopped a little bit but i mean it, it did fine but it didn't do that they spent 200 million making oh yeah tour. dude they made a, was the, i mean it was a yeah. lot of money a lot they, of money they, it was the most expensive mmo in history at the time if <sighs> i remember right and it's just like it, they didn't achieve the kind of success and that's the big thing like when it comes to MMO success, how much you spent developing the game determines what kind of player base you need to succeed. Right. Um, so, and Ashes is, I, I don't remember what their budget is, but I, I think it's a little on the higher end for average, but so they need, you know, they need, they're going to need more players than say like a Pantheon or some of these smaller indie studios. Mm -hmm. um, and, but Riot, I mean, the amount of money they're pumping in and, the staff they have greg street probably makes insane amount of money and oh, yes yeah. you start looking at the list of like senior producers and game designers and all these different titles like they're gonna need to have over a million i think to be profitable on that mmo so and that so anyways well, go ahead Sorry. No, i was just gonna ask do you think riot's mmo is gonna be pay to win there's no uh, no yeah, I don't think so. Like they've never really done that, right? It hasn't. Um, I think, but the thing, the, the biggest thing, like I've already said, but Riot always makes the same game everybody else makes. Look at League of Legends; it was just Dota made more friendly, more user friendly, more casual friendly, easier to get into. Valorant, kind of an easier to get into Counter Strike. Um, right. The team fight tactics or whatever that's called just a simplified dota auto chess like every single game they've made it doesn't break the mold in any way at all it's exactly <laughs> right. the same it's like yeah. they take the top game in the genre and just make the exact game but just make it more streamlined and in maybe better to some extent more casual friendly they they every one of their games 
I mean, I hate to say it, but every one of their games is one of the top games in the in its genre. So I do think the right MMO is a huge contender and it's going to probably be big, but I don't think it will have appeal for me. Somebody that's burnt out on the WoW model, because I think based on what I just said, that it's going to, I think it's just going to be a WoW clone. I think it's going to be, I think it's going to be Wildstar, because if you look at the art style mm-hmm. of Riot Games, I mean, it's the same as what Wildstar had, and they're going to have mm-hmm. action combat that's almost basically confirmed based on the job posting. So, um, which is basically Wildstar. Um, yeah, the, the thing with action combat, not to diverge a little bit, but action no. combat, like, why like Wildstar? Why only eight skills? That's the thing that bugged me. <laughs> action combat. Me too. Like, I I hate only having eight active abilities. That's the thing I like about Tab is the complex rotations and the and and the deep your whole tool set. Like yeah, that. yeah, yeah. Big cooldowns and things like that. I, just, I I like that about Tab. That's why I don't. I wouldn't mind full action. But the same things you mentioned in group PvP, there's a lot, especially because their Ash is going to have projectile collision. Yeah. So imagining group PvP, you're only going to be like in a siege with projectile collision. You're only going to be able to pit, hit the people in the front, the tanks. Right. And of course, with healers behind them, they're not going to die. So you just got to have like a big stalemate when you have everything action because right. you cannot like tab target and start to get close enough to like hit the healers in the back or something with your range spells. Now you right. of course you'll have AOE even with action, but right. Yeah. That's why I don't think you can go full action. Plus with projectile collision, the server has got to calculate every single projectile yep. as it's hitting each person. Um, if you want 500 versus 500, I don't think you can go full blown action with ashes of creation. I think you got to go like, 20 percent action and that's what i hope they do um, but we'll see i mean and, and that's <clears throat> excuse me that's why i said to make action uh just melee because again yeah. the majority of people that want action are all melee players i'm not saying yeah. that you don't have a wild hair who's a caster and loves action because i know i'm probably going to comment oh i'm an action or i'm a you know a caster and i yeah. love action you know what I mean? that's fine you're just not the majority of, of action people because I'm telling yeah. you, I've talked to so many of them, and most of them are all melee players. And I get it. Yeah. Like, and I, if I had a choice of a warrior in World of Warcraft, um, I, I would prefer a more action oriented warrior, personally. Sure. Um, because again, like people that play well understand that when I hit Worldwind, I don't need to target anybody. Yeah. I hit Worldwind, right. it's going to hit five play five enemies around me. So, yeah. WoW in itself isn't a true all tab game. It yeah. has a, yeah. it has a hybridness to it, and I yeah. just feel like if let's say at, uh, World of Warcraft has ninety percent tab, ten percent action based abilities, and this is across all the ca- classes and specs. Sure. Ashes of Creation can probably have sixty forty. You know? Yeah, so you're going to have sixty percent of tab abilities and then forty percent of action based abilities because again, there's I think all... that's what they have said. Yeah, somewhere I think that's right. what he said before sixty forty. Yeah. Yeah, and so I think we'll that's see. a I think that's a good blend, personally. Yeah. Um because I think so. Because again, I think if now let's talk about uh classes for a second, because w- what kind of person are you when it comes to classes? Are you a, a melee? Are you a range? Are you a caster, a healer, tank? And I've done like every different thing. I don't stick I'm not like a lot of people you'll hear like I'm always a healer, always a right, healer, right. always a tank, always the I'm not an always person. I, I like to kind of change it up. Some MMOs I'll go into and mm-hmm. and once I've I've mained every role in different MMOs that I've played. Um, Me too. I've probably played DPS more just because that's more often the choice, you know. I mean you have for sure two options for you know, tank tank and heal and the rest are all DPS. <laughs> right. Um but um yeah i mean i've definitely i mean probably tanking is the one i've done the least amount because i tend to be into pvp quite a bit in mmos Mm. which is one of the big appeals of ashes for me Uh, i think the open world pvp and i love open world pvp but we haven't had good open world pvp in forever in the mmo genre it's and that's the biggest appeal for ashes for me is the open world pvp and so i don't tank much because it, it tanks always suck in PvP, and traditionally, the, yes, yes, they need to they need to figure out a way to make tanks not suck in PvP. And Swotor had some interesting concepts with their tanks, but um, I might yeah, say they, they have to figure that out, or otherwise you're you're not gonna have many tanks in Ashes because of how PvP heavy it is. So 
Right. Hopefully they figure that out. <clears throat> you know, and <clears throat> man, let me get some water real quick. Sorry about yeah. that. Yep, yeah, same for me. Man, I, I have a job where I talk all day and then I come yeah. in almost nine hours later and then I want to talk some more and my throat's just not having it. Uh, <laughs> I don't talk to anybody all day, so. <laughs> no, that's fine. So basically, like I was going to say about tanks. In World of Warcraft, you should not be able to queue into arena as a tank, period. Right. That is just my yeah. opinion. Maybe it's not yeah. a good opinion. Maybe it's a hot take. I don't care. I think only healers and DPS should be in, in World of Warcraft arena and battlegrounds. Um, yeah. That's just me. Now, going into uh, Ashes of Creation, tanks do present a problem because there is, I mean, yes, you can queue for arenas, but again, you only, like, if you're a tank class, right? Like, you're just going to be alienated from PvP because, you know, your toolkit sucks or something like that. Like, there's going to be things that you're going to have to do specifically for the tank when it comes to PvP um, that's going to be, that has to be different from other MMOs. Yeah. Um, now, me personally, I'm, I'm in the same boat as you. I love tanking, but that's probably the least specialization of information that I have. So I can't say, oh, I have this encyclopedic knowledge of tanking, you know, and, you know, especially from WoW, because I, I love, like, pr Protection Paladin. I love Blood DK. Um, that's about it. Those are, like, the two tanks that I've yeah. done. And Vengeance Demon Hunter a little bit, but not too much. Um, but that's my extent of tanking. So I, I, I don't yeah. want to speak about it like I'm an expert or anything like that, but I just know that when it comes to PvP and Ashes of Creation and having, you know, world event uh battlegrounds because there's not going to be battlegrounds you're going to queue into in ashes like think of it like this if you're a wow player uh south shore and terran mill if you go to terran mill chances are you're probably going to encounter some pvp going into south shore or you might have some alliance players so there's going to be an area that's going to light up in ashes and that is going to be your dedicated battleground for like the next nine hours and then it'll go yeah. away um, so that's how uh, Ashes is going to handle uh, Battlegrounds. It's going to be all, which I really love that because you yeah, have dynamic, yeah, dynamic right. open world type stuff. Yeah. Yes, because in, in yeah. you know, in WoW, like they haven't added a new Battleground in freaking forever. And yeah. like, it's so, it's always so stale. But in Ashes, if you're going to have the world be its Battleground, dude, you can section off so many different portions of the world to be the Battleground for that day. And you can have interesting weather conditions also be infected with that. Like you can have some awesome, like if Intrepid does it right, which I hope, hopefully they do, um, you, they can nail battlegrounds and other PVP sure. type events. Um, yeah. But when there's it, plenty of places where the corruption is turned off too, like with caravans and right. stuff where you're going to get some really good PVP there and right. guild wars and things like that there's going to be some places where corruption's off where you're going to get good pvp right and yeah and then and yeah the dynamic kind of battlegrounds is an interesting I, I'd, I'd like to see them elaborate on that a little bit but that'll be another interesting one for sure i mean i and i think steven said with any opt-in system the corruption and death penalties won't apply so if you are in the yep. caravan system and you opted into defend or attack, like you're not going to yeah. get corrupted. You're not going to have like the death penalties or anything like that. I think you'll still have a, like if you do die, you might still drop your gatherables or process materials. But like, other than that, like you're not going to experience the yeah. normal death penalties and corruption, which is great. I think that's again, if you have all these different opt-in ways to participate in PVP, why go and kill somebody out in the open world that's harvesting? Yeah blogs exactly it, yeah. makes, it, it makes no sense yeah. you know this set you back it's, with the leveling curve is supposed to be very long in this um, right in this mmo so you don't want to get corrupt and then get the bigger death penalty um that that accompanies that if you do die so i mean not a lot of people are going to do it unless i mean yeah i could see like somebody's dissatisfied with ashes and wants to leave the game like they go out with a bang like you're gonna see some of that <laughs> for um, sure uh and you'll see i you'll see some of it but i don't think you see a whole lot but i wonder you know i do wonder like with the guild wars if people won't use those to abuse and get around the corruption system a little bit so right like if, if you know if some guild is kind of farming an area and you just declare war on them you know, yes so you can fight them without corruption um, but there is like, I think there's like 
there's systems in place to prevent that too because i believe you got to like put down a banner or something and there's like a timer or something so i don't think you can just declare instantly i could be wrong on that but i'd have to go read the wiki it's a it's that, so but. hard like i said ashes has so many interconnected systems and i think with the guild wars participation or how that works i think you have to declare it and then it's yeah, set so. for a certain time period so yeah. it's not like um like there's a week and you're just out questing you see someone in that guild that you're in participating in the guild war i think it's actually going to be a war set in like a two-hour thing and then once yeah. that guild war is done then the event is done i think that's how it's yeah. going to work i mean i could be wrong but i yeah. i don't really seen right. it being a three day long or a week long yeah. guild war like i i just yeah. don't see that happening but again i think ashes is doing so many things to give pvpers their their pvp you know there's going to be yeah. queuable arenas there's going to be duels i mean there's going to be like gurabashi arena style coliseums um there's going to be like a, in the the caravan opt-in system there's going to be naval stuff there's going to be yeah. plenty of pvp to be had in ashes yeah well the um, scarcity resources thing where you have to trans you you're going to have to transport things in order oh, for to sure. make things. Um, and that's going to create PVP. I mean, everybody knows the caravan for is sure. probably the number one system that's going to create I'm so dynamic open system. world PVP. Oh, so, yeah. But, I mean, yeah. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And the, and the sea combat and stuff like that. Arcage did a lot of things wrong, but the sea combat was the best in an MMO, I think. Um, and, and it's basically what Ash is going to have, but maybe expand it a little bit. So the, the C combat is going to be really good for open world PVPers as well. Um, so I'm excited about it. It's going to be the first open world PVP game in a long time. And people say open world PVP MMOs, they all fail. The problem is Arcage had like Arcage had uh, one and a half million players until they went pay to win. They were and they were growing. Yeah. Like there's a huge demand for it and just people don't realize it, but there's a big demand for it. I mean, people play all kinds of PvP games. Like League of Legends is one of the biggest MOBAs. 10 million, 20 million people play it. I mean, it, there's so many PvP games that people play. Right. It's not MMO players do not dislike PV open world PvP at all. It's just right. they've always been either extremely poorly funded, right. and you get these really buggy crap indie games, or it's pay to win and if, if we mm -hmm. ever get one and i think ashes could definitely be the one and they won't be pay to win for sure but we'll have to see the polish and the combat and all that but um if we get one that that hits all the marks people are going to see just how many people do enjoy open world pvp no for sure uh, i was just going to ask uh how do you feel about the leveling because i i talked to so many people and they can't grasp around the idea that it's going to take almost a month and a half to level in ashes. Yeah. And I think it's because so many people are used to going into any MMO day one and being max level. Yeah. Like, so I'm just curious on your thoughts it. about it. I'm all for it. Yeah, I think it's great. I mean, it's one of the things that MMO players do and the guides and stuff kind of caused a lot of this, but people rush to max level and then they're out of content really quick. And if you oh, delay yeah. that, um, it makes it easier on the devs, first of all. For sure. Because this is going to be like a theme park sandbox hybrid, a little bit more theme park, I think. For sure. And as a theme park MMO, like you constantly got to make content for these guys because people just consume it all. Right. Um, and, but if you delay that, if you make the leveling curve very long, that helps the devs out a lot. It, it makes people have a lot more to do <laughs> before they run out of things to do um and gives the devs time because after launch there's going to be so many bugs they're going to have to work out i don't care how long they do beta or alpha every single mmo launch there's so many things the devs have to fix after launch they're not going to have time to make new content for probably four months after launch they're going to be just fixing things and they so having that long leveling curve helps a ton it's going to help them a ton, ton uh to delay people getting to max level give them more time to get the bugs worked out then they can start making new content making new zones and things that they need to do for people that start to hit that wall but you know it's more than leveling and they say you know it's they're going to make the leveling enjoyable and things like that we'll see i i hope they do um if they can make the leveling enjoyable and not make uh, the end game the only game <laughs> oh yeah and the for nodes, sure. i mean the nodes are, are a big the nodes are in some ways the end game and for you're sure. doing that from level the get go. One. Yep. So yeah. So 
yeah, we'll see. I, I think it's great. I like having a long leveling curve, and um, that's what MMOs used to do. EverQuest took like people took years to get to level sixty on that thing. So that was right. back before guides and stuff too. And nowadays, you do it faster. But the one um, thing, I'm sorry, were you, were you finished? I'm sorry. No, no, no. Go ahead. Yeah. Okay. Uh, no, I was just gonna yeah, say, yeah, I, a lot of times I don't uh, end my sentences very well. Just, <laughs> no, <that's fine. laughs> you don't want to end with an um, you know, and you're like, what are you done? <laughs> no, I, well, cause... I just roll off the table if you want. <laughs> that's when I'm done. <laughs> no, you're fine. Man. No, I just because my whole thing is, is that give them the end game at level 10. Like, yeah. seriously, like, that's what I say, because in Ashes, if you could literally have a list of features, right, and say that these were the list of features that are level 50, make those same features at level 10 available. Yeah. Because then it makes leveling kind of ancillary. Like, you have to do it. You want to get stronger. You want to get better. Yeah. But there's nothing you can't do at level 10 that you couldn't do at level 50. So if yeah. you're like, oh, I want to experience the end game, well, end game starts at level 10. Like you're going to have a, maybe a mount by then you're going to have your little rowboat by then. And you're going to have basically open to anything you can do in the world. You're not barrier to anything, but if you think about it and let's say lost Ark examples, well, you have to be level 50 to experience the end game content. You can't queue for like the, uh, their like riff system or like the way you do your daily stuff. Like you can't do any of that before level 50 and you have to have your story capped and finished before you can even do that as well. So there's a lot of barriers in Lost Ark uh, to where, you, and same thing in World of Warcraft, you can't queue for raids or anything like that at level 10 or anything like that, uh, but you can't do dungeon stuff. But Ashes is going to be so different. So if you can give people end game systems early and start actually working on those end game systems early, then does yeah. it really matter that it's going to take a month and a half or maybe even longer, maybe even shorter, depending on how efficient you are, um, does it really matter what level you are? No, not at all. No. And I think that's the beauty of it because I re think back in World of Warcraft, like classic, not even classic, but like I'm talking my classic experience back in 2006 um, because I played, uh, first time playing was October of 2006 and it was still not a uh, Burning Crusade yet. Um, and I had a lot of fun just, and it took me a long time. It actually took me about two and a half months. Uh, but this was me as a complete MMO noob, yeah. didn't know anything, yep. but the journey was incredible. Like it was, and yeah. it was a little grindy, which is fine. I, I didn't mind. I don't I mean, cause at the end of the day, like if there's a little bit of a grind to it, I'm cool. But there were so many quests to do in, in original WoW. Mm -hmm. And I feel like for how, uh, Steven is with the lore and how centric he is to the story and just how the node system is. And I want everything to be able to give experience. Like whether it's your profession, whether it's doing anything like, like I want yeah. everything to be able to give a good amount of experience to where even if you want to do like a, a couple of levels, just discovering zones or maybe even discovering treasure chest in the zones that gives you a pretty good amount of XP. So there's like all these different ways to actually level instead of it just being like in other MMOs. The only thing you can do to level is the story. There's nothing yep. else you can do that just ties a lot of people's hands. Like some people don't yeah. care about story. Even in Final Fantasy, there's some people that boost right. because they don't even give a shit about the story. They just want to yeah. do the raids. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I've been playing a little Final Fantasy recently and just because there's nothing else to play and I'm not, I'm not that big in the story. So it's, it's been hard for me, but yeah, but yeah, I mean, why not have like, I think people know how to play MMOs now. Like MMO players are all pretty seasoned at this point. For sure. And I know, yes, they're probably going to try to bring in some new people and I hope they do. And they, maybe they need to figure out something different for, for those people. But for the rest of us, I don't want to just have one skill for my first five levels. Give me like 10 to start or something. I think they're going to have like 20 or 20 to 30 act. It's going to be a big rotation. Like a right. wow, you're gonna have a like classic wow. You're gonna have a lot of skills in this game. Did lineage have and, a lot of abilities? Um, I never really played lineage. I've, I've researched I. it a little bit, yeah, but I, yeah, I don't think so because it was isometric. So I don't think it was like massive on the rotations. Okay, Arc Age had pretty big rotations. Okay, um, but, um, but yeah, just like give us more of the game, uh, more quickly, and make like more group content that that's challenging early on why does why do the hardest bosses have to be at max level 
Right. And why not have some hard bosses at like level 10, level 15? And in A1, they had that. These level 10 bosses were very hard. You needed a good group to do them. Right. Um, you needed to kind of learn the mechanics. You would wipe. You would definitely wipe the first time when you ran up on. Nobody knew how to. That's one of the cool things about A1 is you'd run up on these bosses. Nobody knew anything about them. And you would wipe. You would almost always wipe the first time. For sure. And God, until people found some play. There was this like juvenile dragon like you could farm and like get really good weapons and once people got all of those <laughs> then a lot of the bosses became a lot easier but um right but yeah it was um it's it was why not have that why not have some challenging content early on make the game enjoyable early on and, and why does it take right. 100 hours before it starts to get it enjoyable and exactly they're going for that so they are going for that and we'll see i hope they i hope they uh hope they pulled off that you just said it with the hundred hours thing. And I'm like, yeah. make it the first, you know, hour, make it enjoyable. You know what I mean? Like, I, I don't yeah. see the need in, in having to gate content because of level. You know what I mean? Yeah. Because we're already going to get that already with like, there's going to be nodes that are going to be, the mobs are going to be level 30. And if you're level 20, yeah. don't go into that zone, you know, just like an old wow. Right. Like you can't go into Fellwood if you're level 17, you know what I mean? So yeah. it's just one of those things where you, you literally just, you're going to be barriered, but at the same time, like just unshackle a lot of this stuff that used to be shackled in other MMOs, because I think that's why a lot of people get bored because really leveling has been, become a tutorial in a lot of MMOs. And mm -hmm. I think in Ashes, if you were to have all these different ways to get XP and a lot of things are efficient to level. I think it's going to be really great for new players that have never played MMOs because they don't know what they like because they never played an MMO. But if they can try all these different things, whether it's doing the main story quest, whether it's exploration, whether it's professions, whether it's PVP, I don't know. Just let them go loose. Let them do what yeah. they like and still get great experience from it and not feel sure. like, oh, I just killed somebody and got 10 experience. What the hell is that about? It's like because I did yeah. this quest and it gave me uh, 15,000 experience, you know? So this yeah. is a stupid way to level. So I'm not going to do that. So that just literally cuts out a whole part of content that you would have maybe enjoyed. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. that's what my yeah. fear usually is with, with most MMOs is that they really shackle you into doing no, 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 don't do that yeah. content yet. Just do this, you know? And it's this like on rails experience that just becomes so stale and boring and yeah. you just have to shut off your brain turn on some music um and watch youtube on the other monitor while you're just grinding mobs whether it's like in bdo or whether you're just doing the msq and final fantasy 14 or whether it's being uh <laughs> in classic well if you're paying a mage to go and level you you know like it's just i don't know man like i i just hope yeah. that ashes has the right um the right mindset which i believe they do like i i have a lot of faith in steven i have a lot of faith in the developers to do the right thing um, but it's all going to be dependent on Alpha 2. Now, the one question sure. I want to ask you before we do get off this 1v1, when do you think Alpha 2 is going to be out? I'm curious. Er, uh, yeah, I did a video on it. I think early uh, 23. I think, yeah. I think it's going to be ready. Yeah, I think it's going to be ready. I think it's going to be ready in like October, November, maybe December. I think it'll be ready. I think they'll do spot testing during those months, but they're going to delay it um, to Q1. I don't know, February, maybe well, January. I, I'll, I'll go January. I'll say they'll do January. And I think, yeah, I think January. I think January, they're just going to push it past the holidays to make it easier on the devs. I mean, you don't want to launch something like that during the holidays and have, have your staff have to monitor all that during the holidays and stuff. But I think it will be ready, though, in December. I, I actually think it'll be ready before that, but they'll. I, I do agree with you they will purposefully delay it till January. Even if it's ready by yep. October, they will purposefully mm -hmm. delay it. Because I was thinking about this, especially with this past December and also last December's monthly live stream, they always want to announce something big, right? They always mm -hmm. want to give you this huge the kind of surprise announcement. What better announcement than the date of Alpha 2? Like seriously, yeah. for, for Christmas, like for the December live stream to end off the whole year, what better present to say, you know, January 22nd or, you know, whatever date it is, like that's when Alpha 2 is going to be out, guys. And yeah. here's a whole trailer of everything that we've done or something like that. You know what I mean? Like that's, yeah. that to me is like what makes sense 
because I, yeah. I don't see them re- saying Alpha 2 is going to be released in October because then what are you going to release in December? You yeah. know what I mean? So th- that's just my frame of mind and my frame of thinking. And they can always just make it better. Like if they are ready by October or September, well, delay it anyway and, and keep, sure. you know, adding in content, keep doing your, keep trucking, you know, do spot testing then, you know, spot test in September and October all the way to December maybe, and then give your announcement. That's, I was yeah. sort of hoping, like I remember early uh, when I first started my YouTube journey, which was in January, I bet m- money that Alpha 2 is going to be in the summer. I was so dead yeah. set that Alpha 2 is going to be in July because I was like, it's going to be a year after it's, um, uh, after alpha one ended, that's what I thought. Yeah. And I'm like, Ooh, I was wrong. <laughs> I yeah. Was wrong. I can't remember what I thought. I, I, I think I thought 23 because a one was honestly, a one wasn't really technically an alpha. If you go by like traditional definitions, it was a back end test. MMOs, yeah. Yeah. It was like pre, it really was pre alpha. So I thought, man, they got so far to go. And then when they did UE five, then I knew for sure we're probably looking at, um, 2023, but yeah, I mean, I'm still there's still a small chance maybe 2022, but they've kind of shifted like they they used to just show things that weren't really ready to be shown yet, and mm-hmm. they've shifted to now they're only showing things that are really highly polished. Right. And I I I did a I did a video on the dev update, and one thing that caught my eye that Steven said is that a lot of systems, a lot of the art assets are at release quality now. Um I don't know if too many people caught that, but I thought, well, that's interesting. <laughs> so they're saying like full launch for full launch. So oh, I believe that, that we're probably, so we're probably closer than, than people think. On art, it. So, art, art assets is the longest and most time consuming feature in any game. Art is, it. it's, it's just, it is, it's it, but it also takes so long to implement it. Even when the artist is done, the implementation of the art, like whether it's the land, whether it's the players, that also takes a lot of time, but with the transition to Unreal Engine 5, a lot of the front end stuff got a lot easier for the devs to all work together and not play this round robin uh, yeah. of like, oh, I did my thing, I have to log out, you log in. Yep. You know, they don't have to do that crap anymore. So now it's just gonna be more efficient. So I'm sure yeah, art, yeah. I'm sure the their priority for them was completing the art because doing all of the, the questing or the back end stuff for you know combat they could probably switch all that stuff up in a couple of weeks, you know, for, for each yep. system going into alpha two, right. I think you tweak anything or do anything like that. Um, it's not as cumbersome when it comes to art. Yeah, um, absolutely. I think we'll get combat in like August. Uh, he said like t- a couple months. So I'm saying, thinking like two months and then we might see combat in August or September. If we see that, then yes, I would say January. If we don't see, if we don't see combat in like September, then I, I got I would have to start pushing it back. But I think once we see combat, I think we're like within a couple months of, of a two. I, I, I think combat's going to be in July. I, I on, so yeah. Steven already said it. If you watch this live stream, he said that they, he was like, I, I, he said, I hope next month we can actually have the, uh, weather team come on and actually go into depth about their systems. And that's how he said it. So I yeah. think they want to go into more depth of like the weather and, and more seasonal stuff for, for June. So don't expect combat updates this. I mean, they may show something, uh, non-seasonal related, but it's not going to be anything crazy. I think this month they're still going to concentrate on seasons and weather. Um, but I think, I think they might, I think it might be spell effects. Cause as he was saying, oh, yeah, that, I, he true. was doing, he was casting spells. So right. I think it might be spell effects, um, which kind of leads you into combat. Exactly. Eventually. So I, I think they're going to go over like weather uh, and how spells are going to be affected by weather. I yeah. think that's what they're Absolutely. really going to the show. Yeah. But I, I, yeah, you're probably right. And then I think Steven's going to say, hopefully, cross the fingers, July, we're yeah. going to show you, hopefully, cross the fingers, updated combat. Because I think we we're at combat a, in July. Then yeah. I think we could have we could have a two in november or december if we get it if you're right i think yeah i think it we might actually have a two this year right because but. this has always been my prediction and you know i'll answer off with this that the whole reason why i was thinking they're going to show combat in july or even august is because when you show combat that's still not going to say much to people because people right. need to experience it yes, on yeah. the keyboards yeah. So Absolutely. my whole guess was they're going to show off combat 
And then Steven's going to announce spot testing, maybe even that next week or that, you know, let's say if it's the last uh, Friday of July, they said, Hey, in August, we're doing spot testing. So you'll get to go in and give us actual feedback on this updated combat yourself. That's what I hope happens personally. Um, Now I could be wrong. I'm not trying to hype up anybody, but I think that's to me, if I needed actual feedback other than my internal team, that's the way to do it. Yep, I agree. I mean, yes, you need you need a lot of feedback on that for sure. All right. And they might maybe they already have um the internal or whatever those oh, those thousand sure. dollar guys. They might already be testing it. Oh, for sure, for sure, for sure. So is there anything that you wanna capstone this conversation with off Reeve or no, I mean I could sing or sing us out <laughs> or whatever. No. <laughs> <laughs> No, I don't do that stuff in my videos as much anymore, but I, I need to do it a little more. It's kind of fun, even though I can't sing at all, but it's kind of fun it's watching awkward. the reactions and, and comments and stuff. So no, it was awkward. very awkward seeing Asmund Gold watch all that because the thing is, like, I like I didn't take any of my videos serious, obviously. If you watched right. Them. And if I, if I had known that he was going to watch my video, I would not have done the, any of that stuff. You know, I would not have sang or fell off the table or any of that stuff but the video is actually pretty good but the it is like good the entry in the in the end were just so weird but dude um I, all i gotta say man is that the way you broke down all of the tweets and all of the stuff yeah. from greg and just in a really nice entertaining video format dude it was really good like i i i, I just say keep doing what you're doing because I know, especially for me, like it, it can be always be so discouraging having to face the YouTube gods and their algorithm and bull yeah. crap is like that. Algo, but the algo hates me for sure. <laughs> it hates me, but it's really it weird with point. me. Sometimes it loves me. Sometimes it hates me. I don't know what I'm doing. I just put out the video. It does what it does. So, right. but Reeve, thank you so much, man, for coming on, chatting with me about ashes, about MMOs, about you. Absolutely. It was such a great yeah. time, man. And where yeah, can people it. where can people find you? Like YouTube channel, Twitter, like what what's all your socials and stuff? Uh it's all Rive Genesis. I have Rive Genesis on Twitter, uh Reddit. I have a subreddit which nobody's on. I think it's three people on there, so maybe we'll get to like four after this. <laughs> uh a YouTube channel. And uh that's that's the main I, I have a Discord server, but nobody's in there. It's just me in there. So come in there. Somebody should come in there. <laughs> I'll sing some I'll sing for you. If you come in there, I'll just sing and roll off the <laughs> bounce, bounce off the wall, do something, you know. Right. <laughs> well, I'm gonna invite you to my Discord and I'll put you okay. under the other Ashes of Creation content creators that I have on there. And I'm also gonna put all of his socials, his YouTube channel. So if you want to go follow him, watch his content, yeah. it'll be in the bottom of the description of this video. Go and check him out. He's actually a really entertaining and funny dude. Um, but is it Reeve or Rave? I, I've been saying Reeve. I, I don't even know. Okay. I, I don't know. It, <laughs> it could, I, I, I go with, I usually say Rive, but. Okay, um, Rive. I go, okay. I, I say Rive, but people, yeah, it doesn't matter. Like, it's just a made, I thought the name kind of sounded kind of cool. I was young when I made it's that all name. It's all good. And, yeah, who knows? <laughs> <laughs> All right, man. Well, thank you so much. Like I said, guys, if you want to go and uh, like and support him, please do so, man. He's he's an actually a really good content creator. Go and support him. My name is Vladis. That is Rave, Reeve, Rive, Genesis. <laughs> it's all of them. It's all of them. <laughs> Every one of them. <laughs> we will see Multiple you the next one. Yeah. <laughs> thank you so we'll much for guys. tuning in. We'll see you later. Thank you, guys.